Shalom, call Hello Yahweh Bashem Shai, the Ba'anus, the Apostle, and Elder Great Millstone, who rule well. Thou taste of the brethren of the four corners of the earth, plus the word in truth and sincerity. This is I, Ralph from Great Millstone, Wisconsin. Um, I'm going to be saying, uh, got a few scriptures together. I'm going to be saying a few words on uh, the subject uh, that Yashwama put up. So this is going to be a response video. But, um, you know, he uh, put up a video called If the Lord Marked Iniquities, who, who Would Stand? You know, in this scripture that he brought out was Psalms 130 and 3, you know. And, you know, I was just thinking about it. That's totally true. Because, you know, this is, you know, Israel is a nation of sinners. And the whole world, you know, is uh, in transgression, you know, also. You know, since the beginning of time. You know, since the beginning started with Adam, you know. And if it was up to, if, if the Lord actually took, took a, took a tally mark or, you know, he kept track of all the iniquities that everybody did, you know, from the moment that they're born, you know, or, or even from the moment that their spirit was incepted or, you know, or, uh, or created to the, uh, to the, you know, multiple lives that they've had in the reincarnation to now in their present life, you know, no one would be left on the earth, you know, no one would be left to, uh, to till the ground like there would be no more people because everybody has sinned, you know. Everyone has done some type of sin unto death, you know, whether you haven't known it or not, you know. Just being in the world worshiping Jesus Christ, that's sin unto death, you know. So with that, I'm going to jump right into it. I want to start from the beginning at uh, Genesis chapter 3 and uh, verse 6, you know. Because we all know the story of Adam and Eve, you know. Adam was in transgression and Eve also, but he, you know, her eating the other uh, tree of uh, good and evil, you know. So uh, let me get started. This is Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. And when the women saw that the tree was good for food, matter of fact, uh, see. Yeah, I'll start at, uh, matter of fact, yeah, I'll start at 6. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for, was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And you know, this doesn't mean that they ate from an actual tree. You know, this means that that they went and uh, they basically studied under the other nations and took on their customs. That's what this means. You know, the tree is symbolic, you know, for uh, another nation, so to speak. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, you know. You know, they started dressing like the other nations, man, you know. And they heard the voice of the Lord power walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You know, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, power amongst the trees of the garden, you know. You can go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 35, if I'm not mistaken, or chapter 20, as a matter of fact. So we can prove who the trees are just really quick. For the uh, hold up. Here we go, Ezekiel 31, 31st chapter, you know. And uh, basically, this uh, lets you know that the uh, trees of the garden were people, you know. I just wanted to reference that real quick. Matter of fact, let me grab the scripture. Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 8. The cedars in the garden of the Most High cannot hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Basically, meaning, basically, what this is saying is that the trees were trying to hide Adam, you know? And when you go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse, so like in verse 8 tells you that they hid themselves among the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. You know? It says, Nor any tree in the garden of the Most High was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Now how can a tree envy another, envy another tree? Or envy another person, you know? How can Adam be envied by a tree? You know, that's the emotion of a human being, you know? But I just wanted to prove that point real quick. Uh, let me go back to this Genesis. Verse 9, it says, And the Lord power called at unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, 
because I was naked and I hid myself. You know? Now, does this mean, you know, they were actually naked? No. You know? This means that they, they had no, uh, no understanding of, you know, of good and evil, you know? They didn't have that, that, uh, that understanding. Verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? You know? So right then he, he was in transgression. And the men said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord power said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. You know? And that serpent was talking about another nation, man. That serpent seed, uh, predominantly, you know, the nation of Esau today, you know, which is the, you know, the seed of the wicked, you know, which is that serpent, that old serpent, you know. Verse seventeen, it says unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So this is the first sin, man. This is this is how sin entered into the world, man, through Adam, you know. Being the God of a woman, you know, as always, you know, it always takes a woman to get a man to go off. But him being in transgression, you know, this is when sin entered the world. You know? This is second Ezra chapter three, verse four. O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest at the beginning, when thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone and commandest the people. And gave us the body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and did us breathe into him the breath of life. Now, does this mean that, you know, Adam was breathing, you know, by actual, that the Lord uh, breathed air into his, to his nostrils, you know, into his lungs? No. It's talking about, uh, you know, he was, he was given order, you know. Uh, the seven senses spoken of in um, Ezra's chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus chapter 17. And he was made living before thee, and thou leadest him into paradise, you know, which is the Garden of Eden, which thy right hand hath planted before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, you know, which his way was not eaten of the tree of good and evil, man, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointed death in him and in his generation, you know. And people say we all come from Adam, right? Well, guess what? You know, we all sinned just like Adam did. Of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number, you know? So the generations from Adam all the way until now, you know, we're descendants of Adam, you know, predominantly the nation of Israel, you know? Because we were those Adamites back then. And every people walked after their own will. And did wonderful things before thee, meaning that they walked in sin, man, they transgressed the laws. And despised thy commandments. You know? So so eat from, from Adam even unto now. You know, people walk out through their own will, man. You know, that's uh and that's a, a a spirit that's put you know put out by uh, Alistair Crowley called the do with thy do with thy will spirit, man. You know? Or or uh, you know that's and that spirit's been around for thousands of years, you know, a year since the earth was created. You know, I want to do what I want, man. I'm not going to follow the law. I'm not going to follow the Lord. You know, that's what the nations are doing now today. That's why this world has to pass away, you know, with a great noise. <laughs> you know, let me, uh, now this is Second Ezra chapter 7, verse, let's see, I'm starting at verse 48, you know. Because Adam, you know, he, he transgressed, so now that he transgressed, now there's a penalty for that, you know. Like we just read that all of his, uh, all the generations after him, you know, were appointed to death, you know. Verse 48, O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For thou, for though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee, you know. And the scriptures say in 2nd Ezra 6 and, uh, 54, you know, but we all come from Adam, you know. So not only was he was he in transgression alone, but now, you know, we, we transgress as well. You know, we're cursed as well. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death, you know? 
you know, I'm going to read it again. You know, it says, For what profit is unto us if there be promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? You know? So we're all doing works that bring death, you know? Chief among them, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, you know, that thou shalt have no other gods before me, you know? That's a sin unto death. And that there is promised us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. Right? So in us is, you know, a promise of everlasting hope, which Israel was given the promises, you know, in the covenant, you know, a promise of the kingdom, you know. But we're made vain, man. We're mostly wicked, man. The scriptures say the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, you know. You know? Uh, when you read, you know, Romans chapter, well, I'm going to read it in a couple of more, uh, more verses. But when you read Romans 8, you know, it tells you that the creature was subject to vanity, man. You know, we were created. And, uh, in sin, you know, we were created, you know, from Adam all the way down to, to 2016, you know, we, uh, were born in sin. Now, does that mean that everybody, uh, that everybody's actually born in sin, meaning that, that, you know, uh, you were born of a, of a, your parents had a relation, adulterous relationship and you were born out of that relationship? No, that's not what it means. You were born in sin, meaning that, uh, since the beginning of the world, you know, there, there has been sin, and through reincarnation, you know, through the, through the multiple lives that you've had over the generations, you have been sinning, you know, so each time you're born, you're born in sin, you know, no matter what it is, you know, another cloak, another, uh, another, uh, shelf for that sin is the flesh, man, you know, we're mortal men, so right there we're born in sin, that's what, uh, King David was meaning when, in Psalm chapter 51, where he said that, uh, he was born in sin, you know, this is Romans chapter 5, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. You know? And I've been saying that, you know, constantly over the course of the video. Sin entered into the world, man. And death by sin. You know? And so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. You know? And that's, and you're sinning right, you know, you're, we're sinning today. Right now. You know? You know we're sinning man so that's what it means it says we're born in sin because we're we're, we're uh doomed to sin since the beginning man you know like scripture said back in second Ezra, it says you know whereas we have done the works that bring death you know and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned as the similitude of Adam's transgression. See? Even over them that have not sinned, you know, after the same, you know, transgression that Adam did, man. Because, because you know, Scripture says, uh, you know, thou hast not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee, you know? You know, just like the scripture said in uh, 2nd Ezra 3 you know it says it says uh, and, thou, and thou gave us commandment this verse 7 to love thy way which he transgressed and immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations of whom came nations tribes people and kindreds out of number you know so death reigned man death passed upon all men you know it says of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that is to come. Now, for those that you can re that can receive it, you know this is actually uh, talking about reincarnation. You know, because him that was to come, you know, well the him that was to come actually came a couple times. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, starting with uh, Isaac. You know, it said verse 15. It says, but not as the offense. You know, so also is a free gift for if through the offense of one, many be dead, you know, much more the grace of the most high and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh shot at the bounded unto many, you know, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's basically the core, man, you know, the Yahweh shot has given us grace, you know, that's why when you read Psalms chapter 130, you know, in three, it says that thou shouldest mark. The Lord shall mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Meaning, if the Lord, you know, went tit for tat for every sin that we did in the world, man, everybody would be dead. There will be no, there will be no one left at all, you know? You know? 
That's why I said, for if through the offense of one, many be dead, you know, we will all be dead. Much more the grace of the Most High, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Shai, hath abounded unto many, you know, and that many that he the abounded the grace unto, or, or the uh, imputation of the sin, you know, is upon the one-third elect, you know, 144,000 in the multitude, man, you know. That's the many that, that's going to be imputed for their sin, man. That they're going to be cleansed, you know, and ultimately delivered, you know. Because if they're not, you know, the, the, the cycle is not going to, uh, not going to be broken, man, but by Yahweh Shai. You know, because if it's not, you know, uh, the flesh, you know, would, would overcome us, man. And if we didn't have the spirit, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, you know, so we were made subject to vanity, man, but so we can be subject to hope, you know, so we can have a, have a God to praise, you know, you know, so we can have uh, something to look forward to, man, to the kingdom of heaven, man, you know, so the Lord can ultimately fulfill these prophecies and bring about the destruction of this world and bring about the, you know, the world of Israel. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the Most High. You know, and that bondage of corruption, you know, is talking about our bodies, man. You know, matter of fact, let me go to Jude uh, chapter 1, you know, just to prove that point, man. That's a lot, yeah. No, this is Jude chapter, well, Jude, <laughs> verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, you know? Now, does that mean that angels were, are actually in chains and are waiting to be judged? No, they're angels. They're righteous, you know? This means that they were, if they're in everlasting chains under darkness, you know, this means that they were put inside the flesh, man. People like me and you. You know, but when you go back to Romans chapter eight, it says, "For we know that the whole, verse twenty-two, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Why? Because there's so much wickedness going on, man. You know, and, you know, and we're men, man. We die. We have short lifespans. You know? We die. We get sick. We get old. We suffer. You know. It says, and not only they, but ourselves only." Which have the first fruits of the spirit, you know. Which going back to that, uh, that well, I don't need to get scripture. Go get the scripture again. But going back to that Jude chapter, you know, one verse six, you know, that's talking about the angels, man. They had the first estate, man. That was what you how the created the world, you know. It says even we ourselves grown within within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit the redemption of our body, you know. You know, and that's what, like I said earlier, that this is the chain, man. Why did he say we're waiting for the redemption of our body? You know, because the body is the chain, man. The body is a chain in darkness that 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 uh, that sin dwells in, man. That we're stuck in until, you know, waiting for it, groaning in anguish, the spirit waiting for Yahweh Shai, man, waiting for him to adopt us, you know, to bring us back into the fold of Israel, man. You know, which is, which is the kingdom of heaven. You know, being part of the 144,000, man, and being delivered, you know? So now, that's where, you know, we get this uh, Psalm chapter 130, verse 3, you know? You know? This is uh, Psalm 130 and 3. If thou, if thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? You know? Which answer is nobody, you know? Because everyone has sinned in some type of shape, or some type of way, shape, or form, man. Whether they know it, understand it, or believe it or not, man, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's you now or whether it's in your past life, you know, only person that has walked the earth and has not sinned is Yahweh Shai, man, because he beats sin, man, he looks in the face and, and you know, and stared at him right in the face and won that staring contest, you know, he, Yahweh Shai won that boxing match, you know, but as for us mortal men, man, we would all die. Except, verse 4, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. You know? 
So the Lord forgives, man. But he doesn't forgive everybody. As we've all said, forgiveness is not for everyone, man. Deliverance is not for everyone. You know, salvation is, is of the Jews, man. You know, Israel shall be saved with the everlasting salvation, world without end, you know. You know, and that Israel that's talking about, that world of Israel is talking about the 144,000, the one-third elect, man. That's who that, that's who that, uh, that world is talking about. So this forgiveness is for the nation, for the, the elect of the nation of Israel, you know. They're the ones that are going to be forgiven, man, because they're going to ultimately be delivered, and they've been predestined. So whatever they do here on this earth, you know, they're already predestined that they're going to be delivered. So their sin is already forgiven, you know, before the judgment day. It says, but there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Hope what? Hope that we can be saved and delivered from these chains of everlasting darkness, you know. So with that, you know, uh, this is my response to, you know, Yashua Mamba's, uh, the Lord Mark the Iniquity video, you know. And uh, whole brothers were edified. I'm gonna give all praise to call to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. Call Allah Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. The Master of the Apostle Elder Great Millstone. Citation of the brothers on four corners of the earth. Push the word, truth, and sincerity. Shalom.